Everyone thinks drones and LiDAR are the future, but the real battle doesn't happen in the sky. It happens on the ground inside all unevil, unpredictable buildings that absolutely punish any scanner that isn't up for the job. And here's the thing surveyors never admit. If your point cloud is wrong in these environments, the whole project collapses. Bad geometry means bad drawings, wrong volumes, wrong fits, wrong bills. Clients don't care if it was the scanner's fault, they blame you. That's why I took the search S20 Slam and Pix4D catch with the MLIT kit and scanned two 18th century buildings here in Scotland. These structures expose every flow in your workflow. They don't care about your sensor, they don't care about your marketing brochure, they just show you what your kit can really do. And after almost 20 years of serving, I can tell you this, one of these scanners handled it far better than I expected, and the other one struggled in a place I didn't expect it at all. By the end of this video, you're going to see the truth, the geometry, the drift, the broken ages, the places where each one failed and the moments where one scanner completely surprised me. Before we go to the field, you need to understand why these two tools behave so differently. pix 4 Catch uses your iPhone's IMU, its camera, its tiny LiDAR and boosts everything with RTK corrections from the MLID RX or the MLID RX2. Under the hood is photogrammetry, but the iPhone's LiDAR helps tighten alignment and reduce drifts in tight spaces. This system is clever, but remember, it's still using consumer sensors. And inside a twisted 300-year-old stone building, these sensors can get confused quickly. The IS-20 is built for one purpose, mapping while moving. Slam means the scanner builds a map and figures out its position at the same time. Imagine walking with a flashlight in a pitch black room. Every time the beam hits a surface, your brain updates the map and your location. That's slam, but running thousands of calculations per second. The S20 uses a powerful Levox LiDAR sensor, 12 and 16 mechanical shutter cameras, LiDAR slam plus visual slam fusion, 200,000 points per second, 40 to 70 meters range, depending on surface. Otherwise, it should be an easy win, but slam has one weakness. If it loses tracking even once, the whole trajectory can drift, and all buildings love creating drift. Alright, let's go to the first building. I started with something that looks simple, but it's really not. A dovecote from the early 1700s. If you don't know, a dovecote is a small stone tower full of tiny nesting holes for pigeons. Beautiful buildings, but a nightmare for scanners. Curved walls dark surfaces, repetitive geometry everywhere. This type of structure exposes every weaknesses in your workflow. You either get it right or the building shows exactly where you messed up. I use the same route for both devices. Only RTK, no control points. The building decides the winner. I started with the search as 20. With SLAM, the rules are simple. Move slowly and always close your loops. That keeps drift under control and gives the software the best chance to build a clean trajectory. The whole scan took 4 minutes and 30 seconds. And here's the first surprise. The drift was basically zero. On the building like this, I expected some correction but the S20 held itself together really well. So now the question is, can the Pix4D catch match this? Next, I scanned the exact same dovecote with the Pix4D catch and the MLIT kit. Here the rules change. You move even slower to avoid motion blur. You need more overlap. And because the field of view is smaller, the scan takes longer. This one took just over six minutes. And walking through, I could already tell the point cloud would look very different. Now let's talk about the software, because this is a big part of the story. The S20 uses Share Point Cloud Studio Simple, basic, free, but honestly, it works. Pix4D Catch uses Pix4D Matic and Pix4D Cloud. 15 years of photogrammetry experience behind it. Very mature, 
very powerful. Share gives you the color and non-color point clouds. Pix4D Mate gives you photogrammetry, LiDAR only, or a fused point cloud that combines both. For this comparison, I use the color point cloud from the S20 and the fused point cloud from the Pix4D Catch. One note, Share uses ellipsoidal heights, so if you want the point cloud georeference properly, use at least four GCPs. Pix for the Matic handled the coordinates perfectly. Now let's look at the results. The S20 point cloud is denser but it struggles with darker surfaces and because of the sensor design there is a small blind cone where it can hit vertical points. The colors look a bit faded because it's a colorized point cloud but when you cut a slice the geometry is very clean, very little noise sharp edges. Now the Pixel Catch point cloud. The colors are much closer to reality because of the photogrammetry. More texture, more detail, but definitely more noise. If you can slice, you see that noise clearly. Now let's go to the second side. A church from the 1750s. Abandoned, damaged, indoor and outdoor areas, tight geometry, high walls, everything you need to test the scanner properly. I started again with the S20. The route was long and complicated, almost nine minutes of scanning. This is the kind of route where slam usually drifts, but again, almost no drift. Honestly, that impressed me. Then I repeated the same route with Pix for the catch and it drifted a lot, especially in the transitions between indoor and outdoor. So I rescan only the outdoor area and the indoor of the main hall to keep the arrows under control. Back in Cloud Compare, the pattern continued. The S20 had sharper geometry and clearer edges. Pix for the catch had better color and better texture, but noisier data and less stability in difficult areas. And let's be honest, this is no easy sight. And here, the differences were very clear. So which one is the best? Here's the truth most people don't want to hear. If you choose the wrong tool for the wrong environment, you won't notice the mistake during the scan. You will notice it later when the architect says the walls don't line up or when the contractor asks why the measurements don't match reality. That's the real cost, not the scanner, not the license. The reward, the delays, the damage to your reputation. So let me make this simple. If you need something light, pocket size, waterproof and almost idiot proof to operate, Pix4D for the catch is fantastic. Pair it with the Emnid RX or RX2 and you have a scanner and a GNSS kit you can carry in one hand. Yes, it's not cheap. Yes, you need a Pix4D Matic license and Pix4D Cloud runs on credit. But if you work on utilities, small construction site, archaeological work, dilapidation service, anything where texture and color matters, then Pix4D Catch gives you accuracy and beautiful detail in a way handheld slam scanners still struggle to match. But don't let the color fool you. This is not the tool for large spaces or long routes. Use it in the wrong environment and the noise and drift will come back to bite you. If geometry is king, need consistency. If you're scanning larger areas, longer routes or complex indoor environments, the S20 is the one you trust. It's faster, it's more stable, and as you saw in the church, it stays together in places where photogrammetry simply falls apart. Yes, it's not waterproof. Yes, you need to treat it with a bit more respect. And yes, there is a learning curve. But when the job depends on accurate geometry over distance, this scanner gives you confidence you will not get from a phone sensor. Ask yourself one question. Do I need beautiful color and detail or do I need geometry over space? Pick the wrong tool and you will spend hours fixing problems that were creating the moment you press star scan. Pick the right tool and the workflow becomes effortless. And one more thing, if you're serving bigger areas and you want the detail you can capture from the ground, that's where drones become essential. And yes, even the small drones can do more than people think. If you want to know whatever a DJI Mini can actually survey buildings for inspection, that's exactly what I show in the next video.